it's, it seems to be a common theme recurring throughout this county. Being in Coity Higher, uh, we see what happens with Persimmon on Park Derwin. Mm. That there's no urgency to keep hold them accountable to their um, agreements. This is Persimmon uh, for Bridge End Council. They do it at Tremor Castle with Wimpy and uh, with Taylor Wimpy and things like that. They don't hold them accountable when there's clear things in there that say you have to do this by this date, and they just give them warning. But yet they continue to keep authorising, um, agreeing to extra development or more development continuing on when they should have. It's like it take. When I first stood in Lichard for Community Council in 2017, they, part two had been built for six years, most of it. And there was a sign on the estate in Park Doing that said, coming soon new play park and that's been there for six years and i Have think you got your play park yeah there's some play parks been built <laughs> not all of them and because of the summer weather and that some of the grass has not taken properly because it has to be shut so so long until so the gra grass can knit in and because of the weather the grass has dried out and burnt out so they're gonna have to replace it again it's the same on Tremor Castef. Not all the parks been built, and it, they've only just cleared the area for where a park's supposed to be, and that was supposed to be developed before COVID came into effect. It's it's, um, it's it, incredible, isn't it? And they say, send warnings, and we get reports from the council uh, from Councillor Amanda Williams all, all the time, who is the Coity representative, that they're just sending warnings when they could clearly enforce what they're doing and we, to go back to the unadopted areas the unadopted roads and things like that they're supposed P persimmon or whoever built broadlands i can't remember so long ago now um it was I, multi, multiple builders yeah uh, but persimmon were probably by far the largest i mean that they built the majority of yeah. the west side of Broadlands. It, it, um and um you to, to say it's been a frustrating process to get them to hand it over for adoption um, would be the understatement of the century. Well, they're supposed to build it to a certain standard before the council considers any sort of adoption of the land. But the council saves money by not pushing the adoption. And, they do. And, and, and um, that's and, the problem. But yeah, people... there, there's, but there's a fatal flaw in the whole system because oh, yeah. the, 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 the council don't want to push for adoption um, because they have to cover the cost then of maintaining it. But there's no mechanism that exists to force the landowner to even hand it over for adoption. No. Now, we're, 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 I'm very fortunate to be now part of the, the, the Liberal group on the, um, on, on the community council, as yeah. you know. And we've been very, very forward thinking over the last 10 years um, about putting in new play parks, looking to upgrade facilities. We've done that without any handouts from DTBC, and you've seen all of the um, handouts that have been given in yeah. certain areas. Um, you know, we, we installed um, the first all inclusive play park, I believe, in Bridge End, up at Bridge yes. Field, um, which is a remarkable project from uh, Tony Barrow. Um, who, who championed that right the way through. Um, but we, we've looked at putting, even on, on my road, we've got a lovely little green patch that was overgrown for years. And um, I got in contact with Bovis, spoke to a lovely chap there. They now maintain the land. Got them to agree to put it up to adoption for BCBC. We can take it. But we've not been able to build a play park where there should be a play park. Because BCBC won't take the land for absolutely no reason whatsoever. So even when they put it up for adoption, you find people stalling. And that's yeah. incredibly, incredibly frustrating. When you get a decent home builder that will actually work with you. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, you, you end up banging your head against the brick wall. And I think this is the frustration for me, is that I'd rather be in the inside of that, banging my head against the brick wall, trying to fight for the people... In yeah. my community than being someone on the outside not knowing who to talk to if, if that makes sense oh oh yeah it, it make, 
makes a lot of sense because and that will come on to something we're going to talk about a bit late a bit later uh, it, it it makes a, a lot of sense because but the, there are a lot of people out there who do know what councils and that are supposed to do um but there are a lot of people who think don't really have a clue what community council does and what a county council does but we're going to come on to that a little bit later so it's been nearly just over four years since the last election um you were obviously elected to Lalliston Community Council. What has Lalliston Community Council done for the local area in the last five years? Or four that's years? A really good, that's a really, really good question. So um, I think I think not as much as I would have liked. In all honesty, I think mm. COVID has really, really stifled um, what we would have done um, in an ordinary term. Um, also, the council is no longer Lib Dem led. Um, so, uh, as you know, when you have multiple groups, sometimes you have multiple interests. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm really pleased to say that the council does work together. Um, and it works for the benefit of the community. And I think the big thing that came up this time was Regen Council wanted to get rid of all of the community buildings, pretty much, um, and get them into uh, different ownership. So, what we did as a community council is we took over um the Lawson and Brintirian Community Centre um in Brintirian and we've spent a large proportion of our preset upgrading those facilities, making them fit yeah. for purpose. So um you know we're we're blessed there that we've got playing fields, um we've got decent parking facilities. Obviously I talked about the inclusive park. Um but we've we've invested heavily there in making sure that we've got the, well, we've got the only community building left within our community there, so it's essential that we protect yeah. that. Um, but we've also made it so it's useful for you know various groups. Uh, I know they have uh, yoga in there, Zumba, um, and obviously you've got place there for kids' parties and things yeah. like that as well. Um, so you know that that for us, despite COVID, has been the big project um, over the last few years. Uh, but we've also, you know, I think we've learned from COVID that people are now working from home a lot more. I think that blended working is certainly going to be something that's going to continue. I speak from my own experience um, where, you know, I work for a business that's closed lots and lots of offices because we've realised we actually don't need them. No. You know, there's, there's great efficiencies in people working from home and actually they work more productively. So one of the things we have looked at doing is putting adult exercise equipment into some of the parks. So over the next few months, you'll notice those appearing in, in different bits of our community, um, which I think is, you know, a, a great uh, a great thing to be looking at doing as well. I, I think that's great. And I think I, it's hard to keep up with what a community council does. And people don't generally know unless they're connected on Facebook continue looking at the website or things like that I think it, but when a council does something wrong no matter what council it is that is everywhere and everybody knows about it, it, it bad think, news travels around faster it, than it, good it news, does and it? I think you know the frustrations I get are hedge cutting dog food litter yeah. bin you know the the um, that you would love to make wave a magic wand and say, yeah, we'll do all of that. But actually, that doesn't, we don't have the power for that. That's not, um, that's not Lowson Community Council, that's Bridge End Borough Council. That is what that you pay your council back for, but to, uh, to the council yeah. for. Um, and what you can't have is double taxation because a community council receives a free set to spend on certain things. So the nice things, you know, we get to maintain Chris, uh, church clocks, we get to... Um, baskets. Look, yeah, I mean, you you drive through Broadland, Slowerston, yeah. Brentirian, they are, they're beautiful floral displays. Um, and, you know, that's something that we've done, really, to add to the street scene. Now, people may say, well, have we not got better things to spend our money on? Well, do you know, if we can't make our neighbourhoods and our communities look a little bit nicer, and feel that bit better and bit brighter, then yeah. what are we here for? You know, so, you know, we, we as community council have planted lots of daffodils in places over the years. Yeah. So they're little things that they, they may not mean a lot, 
but actually they, they really do brighten things up. Okay. Um, you know, you look at it, we've, we've got the allotments in Lowestoft that we look after. Um, you know, we look after, uh, we put in bus stops. Um, we do put in additional benches, you know, for people to sit down and enjoy empty spaces. Um, you've then got grip bins that are paid for by us. So if you need a grip bin, mm-hmm. you can write to Lowestoft Community Council, providing you live in the area, and we'll pop a grip bin in. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, also, you've got all the Christmas decorations. And, you know, one thing that I think we, we were really, really conscious of last year in particular, and it certainly formed part, part of the plan for this year, is that when you're in the middle of a pandemic and you're locked in, and you didn't really know what Christmas was going to look like, actually, those those lights and yeah. those extra bits, they make you feel a bit better. Yeah. Um, and, oh, they certainly made me feel a bit better. So, you know, it's about trying to improve people's quality of life um we, we've set up a community pantry uh you know i don't think we i don't think we quite get the amount of people in that we should to, to, to maintain it but the, the thought process is there to try and give back to people in different ways within yeah. the community yeah which is going back to what i said we touch on now it's people don't really understand what community councils can and can't do um what is their responsibilities now you've had quite a discussion recently on the broadlands hub in at this actual subject this is why i wanted to bring it up because people say well why don't the county council stop putting up christmas lights or putting out hang baskets now the majority of them are done by community councils across the bridge end area it's community can, councils can you, Im- take can you imagine can you imagine bridge end county parish council paying for hang baskets please? No, I can't. It, it, their policy at the moment is to let things, the wildflower policy, which is seemed to have come out of nowhere recently, <laughs> the reason why they're it not is, cut, cutting we, these we, grass areas. We don't areas. cut hedgerows or verges because we want to attract butterflies and such. Yeah, yeah this is a policy that seemed to come out of n- come out of nowhere re- recently we're not mm. cutting it because we want the wildflower policy we want, which is all oh, great yeah. i'm all for wildflower. it's great it's great idea but, uh, but it doesn't but, practically work where you are causing road traffic <laughs> issues and things like that does it well, well no especially not on footpaths where people are trying mm. to walk they should be maintained regardless and nothing should be thing. You, you you look at it i mean you get the same excuse every year and and that excuse is the birds nesting we can't cut the um we can't cut edges. And you think about it, and we're talking about, about joined up thinking earlier on. The birds nest every year yeah. at the same time. So why not cut the hedges beforehand so they get a chance to grow the birds nest and then cut them afterwards? And I mean, it may sound like a radical idea, but surely that has more merit than expecting it, you know, a, a young mother or an elderly person or someone on a mobility scooter or someone out running to take their life into their hands, having to leave the pavement, go onto the road to avoid the branches that have taken over the whole path. Yeah. And you then think about the cost of council tax to our residents here. And you know, the, we, there's a big proportion of stupid amounts of council tax being paid on Broadland and Lalafon and Brinterian. And, and you look at it and you go, how on earth can we not get a plan in place that involves Hedge cutting twice a year. We, Bridge End Council, is, I believe it's the sixth highest, or it's certainly within the top ten highest council taxes within not just Wales but the whole of the UK. And Bridge End is supposedly a deprived area, so why are they having to pay so much council tax? I, I, Higher know, I than think, a lot of think... London. Cal- uh, I, I, I mean, I, I've, I've seen the figures that um, you, you guys from from the County Independence have yeah. put up, and it, it, it's frightening figures. And I, I think, to a degree, people accept that the, the you know, if you look at the wider world, yeah, right, we've got hate, we haven't got enough HGV, HGV drivers to get food on the shelves. You know, we've got you know massive amounts of people. Uh, with, with businesses that just can't get people to come and work for them at the moment. Mm. Um, so that everywhere's stretched. I think we get that. And the prices of everything is going up. So I think ordinarily people would accept that prices do yeah. go up if they were actually getting the basic services that they should be getting. And we, we talk about cutting things, 
you know, let's bear in mind that council tax went up last year when it didn't really need to. No, it, it's, it's that... and we're not getting any more services for it. So if you put if you put all of this up, you know, you've got to look at it and go, what are the key things that everyone minds about at every election? Every election, everyone minds about dog food, litter bins. And head cheese and grass going and all the rest of it. How on earth have we not got into this bit of that's what's important to people? Fundamentally, that affects yeah. their everyday life. But obviously, there's lots of other things. How on earth have we still not got this right? I don't think people in Bridgend would mind paying as much as they do if they could see what was being spent on uh, things that are of concern to them, like the litter, like dog mess, and anything like that but all they can see is services disappearing it, it, the youth service practically disappeared 10, ten years ago when, or less than that mm. when they wanted to merge with um, the Vale and that all fell through because they were going to merge youth services with the Vale I remember. They, they did merge the youth service so everything went over to Vale and there was very little in Bridge End when Bridge End at one point had a very good youth service it, mm. but it was whittled down and whittled down and there's a small use service now but what are kids supposed to do they it's okay catering to adults yes they're the voters and things like that but you, they've got to remember kids will one day be voters and they mm. want to see what's going to be there for them because there's not much around at the moment yes there are some things and uh, there's a lot of charities that are putting on things for younger people but it shouldn't be just left to charities to do that um well, well you you look at it there, there is very very there's very very little yeah. for children growing up to do i mean you apart from walking down to newbridge field hanging out with their friends you know they, they, there's not really any activity you know certainly not you know where, where i where i was fortunate enough to grow up around decent community centers community groups drop-in centers you know things that existed within local Communities yeah. that you could go and do, they haven't got any of that, and okay. and it's uh, it's a crying shame. And then we get people talking about people hanging around outside Tesco's. What else have they got to do? Yeah, um, it, and that there needs to be that kind of thought process. A hundred percent agree with you. Yeah, I used to go to the youth club at all the old Anastasia Comprehensive. That was five nights a week. That was yeah. it, and that was brilliant. Okay, you had to pay a little bit to get in. It was like twenty p or fifty p to get in. That's fine. It keeps kids entertained. It keeps them occupied instead of just wandering around the street. You'll always get kids wandering around the streets in groups because not, ev not everybody will want to do this. Mm. But if you've got nothing for them to do, there's going to be that or they're going to be inside on the computers playing computer games and they want people, they want kids to be more involved with exercise and things like that. I mean, it's one of the reasons why um, the community council took the steps that we did to put in Nougat. Yeah. Um, so you know, we, we, we've invested heavily over the last, well, even before my time, um, I think Alison was really put in, but we've invested quite heavily in those multi-use um, games areas where people from the community yeah. can go in and they can actually, they've got basketball courts and they've got places that they can actually play and do things safely. Um, and that's really, really important. It's a crying shame, unfortunately, we haven't got anything like that on Broadway. We've got the teenage part. Um, but, um, you know, unfortunately, uh, that, that's something that we do need to heavily look at because um, outside of school hours, there, there's nothing there. No. Because um, I remember there used to be a youth uh, club up at the Brentarian High School because I worked there a couple of times when I did work for the youth service many years ago. Uh, I covered there a couple of times. I don't know if it's still there. I, I really don't because I know most of the majority of youth services in Bridge End was cancelled. But you take away things for kids to do, they're going to get into trouble <laughs> because they're bored. Unfortunately, and unfortunately, it's not their, so it's, it's not their fault. So we, 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 we've all been there, mate. Oh, yeah, we've all done it as teenagers. 